So, Amai Njuru comes to the UK and someone advises her to go and talk to the BBC programme Hard Talk. Before I delve deeper into what she said, let's take a listen to some of the stuff she said. Whilst I was in government running social ministries, I was never in the office. I was always with the people trying to introduce programs and businesses. I was one of the business associates whilst I was in government to try and show them that I was for mm. the better it, part of the country. Whoa! Wait a goddamn minute. You were always with the people, you say. <laughs> we all know government ministers in Zimbabwe. They don't mix with the general population. They only come out for events and photo opportunities that are carefully orchestrated. Never go into the general public and mix. So that is a blatant lie. Introduce social programs, you say. Tell us. We're listening. Which social programs did you introduce? What are social programs? Are those just uh, words that you're uttering just to kind of confuse and diffuse the situation? We know hard talk is not easy, but please, don't insult our intelligence. Yeah, talk about business. Please, we all know what that means. We all know that uh, uh, most of the companies that were multinational when your government got into power were quickly taken over by a, a lot of your uh, nepotistic uh, colleagues and dare I say yourself uh, if I, if we have to go through your family list and look at where they work, where they have worked, what they own I'm sure it will be very embarrassing. Let's yes. look at the record. You were a minister during massacres. Gukula Hundi. Yes, I was minister of women affairs. 20,000 Matabili people killed. I was minister you, you of knew women it. affairs. You knew it. You did not say a word against it. I did not say a word against it, but those were executive orders that were used by the 5th Brigade. And I'm sure with an executive person, what else would you do? Surely at that, uh, at that stage you must have asked your leader, why are we killing our own people, the people that we fought to free? Why are we boiling babies alive in drums? Why are we bayoneting pregnant women and throwing those bodies down mine shafts? Why are we cutting villagers' ears and noses off and feeding them to their wives? Did you bother to ask your leader these questions? If you didn't, am I you committed a sin of omission, a sin biblically and a sin morally. And you want us to vote for you. How, what discussions did you have with when you got home with uh, Mr. Mchuri, when you were talking about Cook Round? What did he say? How did he feel when that these people that you didn't support uh, were being integrated into the army? So they were integrated into the army. Who are they? Are they still alive? Do we need a truth reconciliation? Something for to happen? And so these guys became part of our national army. This explains why the National Army of Zimbabwe cannot employ people from material land. It explains because Imagine what the life would be like in a barracks. They do employ, they don't have a completely zero tolerance, but the numbers of people from a Tebelele in the National Army are not representative of the proportionality when it comes to the population balance tribally. That's a fact you can't change. So we now know the reason that uh, they chose to integrate Gukuraundist first into the army, and because of this, could therefore not employ Matebele people in the army. 
anymore. In the past, mm -hmm. you've tried to say you didn't even know that the Gukarahundi killings were happening. Are you now prepared to say that is not true? You certainly knew, you just did nothing about it. You know, um, when they asked me about it, because I said, by association, I was in government. But when you say when it was being planned, with no planning but and by with, with all respect, it's totally Mrs. Majuru, different. Your, your husband, Solomon Majuru, was mm -hmm. one of the most senior commanders in the armed forces. Yes. But what so you, I, you obviously knew what, what was going what on. What I know about Solomon Majuru and the 5th Brigade was not part of the armed forces. It was a brigade that was commanded outside the army. He only was involved when this was to be integrated into the army. That's what I knew. So what you are telling us categorically is that uh, the 5th Brigade was integrated into the Zimbabwe National Army and your husband had knowledge and participation in this. So really we have names and details of these people who committed these crimes and uh, we, these records are still in existence. Not after witch hunting and looking for individual people, but we need to know the complete and utter truth for reconciliation to happen. We need that. So, why did you not advocate after this to say, okay, part of us ending this and these people be integrated into the army? How can they be integrated if we don't resolve the pain? of the Mandeville people. He knew and you knew. That's the bottom line. And the Zimbabwean people have to judge you for what you did. Yes, just, they, will just, judge, just... they will judge somebody for what she or he will have done physically. They will judge. Mm -hmm.